In this video, I welcome D. Ramirez, my dear friend, to the Big Question series. And he's going to give us five things producers need to know. Let's jump in. Hey, it's Graham Farmer from Data Transmission. And today on the Big Question, I welcome my dear friend, D. Ramirez. Uh, we're going to talk about things that producers need to know. Uh, hello, mate. How are you? I'm very good. Holding up in these the weirdest of times. Yeah, it's been mad, isn't it? Um, thanks for joining me. It's gonna, I'm excited to hear your thoughts. Um, and let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into your five things producers need to know. Oh, five things that producers need to know. I mean, I've been a, a producer now for like the best part of about 30 years. So I've kind of been through the mill a little bit in regards to um, sort of, I started off doing one thing and then I moved into another thing and now I do another thing. So I'm a producer that wears many hats. Um, but, and I'm sort of thinking about how to break this down into five. I was like, oh yeah, there's so many sort of th things to this. Um, and I guess number one would be learn your DAW, okay? Because we all work with either Ableton, Logic, Cubase, Studio One, whatever it might be. And this is your biggest tool now. Back in the day when I was a, a sort of fledgling producer, I didn't even have a computer. And then the Atari ST came along, which was a game computer, you know? Oh, yeah, I remember that. That was, that's, that was, that was a, yeah, I, well, it was, you either had either one, the Atari ST or the Commodore Amiga. That was fun. Commodore Amiga, that's right. Yeah, I mean, we're going back to the 80s, man. Yeah. A long time. So in the old days, it was like you had to, you know, you had a drum machine, you had a mixing desk, you had a synthesizer. Now it's just everything's in the computer. And it's, uh, of course, it's, you know, it's amazing that we've got these tools. We've got this tool sat there like that. Um, so you can literally do everything with this. But I know so many producers that, um, I won't mention any names, <laughs> but they know who they are, that don't really know their DAW. They can sort of use it on the most basic of levels, but when it comes to actually getting into it, you know, when they come to getting get into it properly, they sort of like, they can just barely skim the surface. And I'm like, you know, invest a bit of time into this. Learn, there's all of these things, extra things it does. If you wanna be a producer that stands out, and you want to be, you know, um, somebody that people sort of respect, you need to know your one tool, which is your DAW. Be it Ableton, be it Logic, get to know it, do every single tu you know, tutorial. I was the man that would sit and read the, the uh, instruction manual in bed at night. I am that geeky nerd, <laughs> you know, and I'm, I'm gutted now because you don't get instruction manuals with things. They could, they're, they're online, so which is a bit of a pain. Um, but yeah, you know, I think just that's, that's, that's my number one tip is that's learn great. everything about it. Cool. That's perfect. I, I, yeah, I agree. Learn your tools. Definitely. Yeah. hundred percent. Same with yeah. everything. Number two. Um, one of the things that um, I always try and tell people is don't buy too many plugins, right? <laughs> because this also feeds into tip number one which is in your DAW is all of the tools you need. Ableton has some great stock plugins and Logic has great stock plugins, okay? But we get sucked into thinking that if we buy the latest thing that's just been brought out, we are going to, uh, you know, it's gonna make us sound better. It's gonna give us that, you know, edge. All it's gonna do is basically give, just take away your, it's gonna distract you and take away your time because you've got to learn this new plugin. Learn the plugins that come with your DAW. Don't distract yourself with with new ones constantly. And um, it's difficult because we are totally bombarded with them all the time. So, yeah, there's the, there's that great story of uh, da Daft Punk. That they built they made homework on like the most basic setup, but they made it because they knew it, it, they knew it how every part of everything they had worked to the max. And and which is which is obviously amazing that it was made on something so simple. But yeah, it completely falls into that line, you know. Exactly. I think these days we have like so many, um, how can I say it? We've got so many things, too, too much choice. Yes. And, uh, you know, restriction is a good thing. In the old days, you had a drum machine, it had, it had eight sounds, and you had to make that drum machine work for everything. And it was, you know, the 808. That's why it was so heavily featured on every single record in the 80s. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, so don't get, don't get sucked into the trap of buying every new plugin that comes out. Or, worse still, downloading it from some hooky site. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is because, you know, you can get things for free now. You don't even have to pay for software. 
it's, yes. become, it's become so dispensable that uh, people don't take it seriously. Uh, number three, and that feeds into number two, which is to learn the plugins that you have, right? Nice. If you've got like lots of plugins on there, chances are you haven't got the time to sit and learn how to use them. So you just sort of might use a few presets and then it just gets stored in the plugins list, never to be looked at again or, you know, whereas if you keep it down to a minimal amount of plugins, talking about, you know, going back to what Daft Punk, you know, the, the analogy of the Daft Punk thing, if you learn um, to le use each and every plugin that you've got, just a few, you become a master of those things and you'll be able to use them, you know, absolutely perfectly and get exactly the sound you want very quickly. Rather than thinking, oh, I've got 10 of these saturation plugins. Shall I go and like, which one shall I try? Oh, I'll try that one. Oh no, I'm, I'm going to try that one. Next thing you know, you've wasted a couple of hours. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, just over, over choice and just... Yeah, just yeah, you end up wasting so much time, which is ridiculous, which is not great. Yeah, exactly. All right, number four is um, in a crazy world that we're living in right now. Uh, be adaptable, and don't be scared to get out of your comfort zone. You know, sometimes as a producer, it's very easy, especially sort of dance music. It's very easy just to learn one style of music. Well, let, let, let's learn how to make tech house and become like really <laughs> good at that, right? Okay, so what, what happens then when Tech House is no longer a thing? and It's gone. You're screwed, right? You know, yes. That's, that's the only thing you've learned how to do. Be adaptable. I mean, by learn how to record things. You know, get out of your comfort zone. Record a guitar. Learn how to, like, amplify something and record it in your hallway. Learn how to make a different style of music. Make some pop music. You know, make... Um, you know, get a vocalist in and learn how to record a vocalist, learn how to actually work with other people, um, learn how to you know, work with musicians, get musicians in, learn what to do with those parts once you've got them. Don't get stuck into that comfort zone because the comfort zone of just doing one thing will only keep you stuck in one place. I've got, I've got a great addition for that. Learn, learn about field recording and as you're trapped in your homes, Try and make a track out of things that are just noises in your house. Oh man, have you ever done it? No, I've, I mean, I can't make music, but <laughs> but I've seen some amazing people do it. And you know, we should even set a challenge: make a track out of some stuff in your home and make a feel out of just recording stuff from your house if you're on lockdown. Uh, ben remembers just done it. He's he's on uh, Instagram and he's just done um, uh, make a track from a beer bottle. Oh, amazing! Yeah. So he had to do the whole thing. Yeah. Great, right? Yeah, I love it. And, and that's it. I, th I think, like, you know, uh, stepping outside of the box in any way you can, especially now, you know, like all of these DJs and all of these sort of people that have lost their jobs, they can't produce. I mean, they can't uh, tour anymore. They've lost their income, basically. Yeah. You know, imagine yeah. if you sort of, you know, and there are a lot of DJs that don't actually make their own music, which is fine. But imagine now, if you're one of those DJs, you kind of like, you're without work, you know? It's such, it's such, it's such a level playing field right at the moment. It, like, you, I, I really feel that there's some people that are going to come out the other side of this, this time and there'll be some new stars because they've done something right in, this, in this, these few weeks of uh, being trapped in your house. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> these are testing times. They are indeed. <laughs> but you know a great time for you know if you if you are adaptable i mean for instance because i've been doing it for so long i've been able to um adapt and, and i'm doing all sorts of stuff fingers in many pies you know i kind of i might engineer for somebody somebody might send me a mix i might do some mastering i might do some you know i've been working on a pop album i'm doing some pop production nice i, li yeah. I like your new disco thing by the way that was amazing making the disco music yeah so i'm Love kind it. of it's like i'm i've kind of like realized that you know stop being so tunnel visioned and kind of you know adapt it's music at the end of the day and it's a beautiful thing exactly and the big number five big to number round five it off, to round it off right as a producer i think all producers should start their own label okay start their own label because there's nothing worse if you're a new producer and you're starting out and you're trying to get your track signed, the problem being now is that there are, how many records, Graham, on, on Beatport every week? 25,000 or million or something ridiculous. <laughs> 25,000 records a week. Yeah. Right? 
how the hell are you gonna if you if you're dj so-and-so that's never done anything before how are you gonna get a track on a label now they've got literally the pick of twenty-five thousand people work yeah. per week you know how are you going to do it and the problem with that is that it's so you get so discouraged by sending your music out to all these labels and you know and people not listening to them and you know just giving you the no that it's really important for your own mental state i think to have to be able to release your own records and there's never been a better time as you know for promoting your own music it's a great time because you can get it up there on Spotify. You can use promo services. You've got social media. You can totally do it. You do the DIY approach and get your music out like that. Make it yourself. And then the, the other labels will come for you afterwards. I agree. And it gives you a back catalog. It gives you kind of something to look at. You can build yourself numbers off of the, off the back end. You know, you can, you can build yourself a presence across, across obviously your, your own DJ channel, but obviously your label channel, you know, like, other things, simple things like like now, if you've got a label, you could be doing label live streams and building the label even bigger because you are inviting three or four people off that label to do one stream from their homes. You know, it's so yeah, I totally agree with you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I've run and I've I've owned and run about four labels in in my time as as D Ramirez as an artist, and um, yeah, I don't so much do it now because I've kind of diversified into so many different things. Be adaptable, you know, but. Um, Without those labels, I would have never have got to the sort of place where I got to because I wouldn't be, people wouldn't touch me, you know. At, at first, people were like, who's this? What's this crazy sound? Who's, you know, who's this guy? Then nobody cared, you know. And it was only because I released on my own labels and I've physically, personally handed those records out to people that I got any notice, you yeah, know. Could, yeah, and we're doing that. Well, I'm doing the same with a few of my artists that just helping them start labels, helping them grow labels, helping them grow themselves. So it's, yeah, exactly the same thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've even got my, a couple, I've got a label just for myself, for Boost Weapons, which is literally for building my artists, just it's from the start, so they've got to get a platform. Um, yeah, exactly the same way, you know? Yeah, you know all about this stuff. Thank you so much for spending this time with me today. Uh, thanks for joining me on a Saturday, and I hope you stay safe and stay well, and um, thanks for these tips, mate. It's been, they've been amazing. If you've enjoyed these tips, drop them in the, drop, drop your favourite in the comments. Uh, also, this is the second time Mr. Ramirez has been on Data Transmission YouTube. Go and search for the first video. It was a long time ago. And it's quite funny. <laughs> How long ago is that now? Probably 10 years, I think. <laughs> it is, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, 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 a, it's a comedy, some comedy. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, man. Cheers, man. See you soon. Cheers, Graham. Bye-bye. Weren't those six good? What did you get from them? Put in the comments below the thing you got the most out of this video. I'd love to know and I'd love to find out more about you and what what you need and what, you, what's, what you're getting from these videos. As ever, um, if you want to get the videos first, smash the bell, comment, subscribe, all that kind of jazz. It means you get them, get a little notification when they go live and you get to see them first. Thanks again for joining us this week on Data Transmission. I've been Graham Farmer. I'll see you next time. Bye.